this is the Adrian Survivor Hive, the one hive that made it through winter. And today they are gonna get split. But first, let me just show you what they've been through since the winter. So as you know, this is how my bees go through winter. We have a deep box and a medium box. This is eight deep frames and then eight medium frames. This is how the Adrian hive went through winter. It's actually Adrian's daughter, which is Balboa's great granddaughter. But anyway, I'm just calling it Adrian. So Adrian went through winter like this. When they came out of winter, the bottom, when I first opened them up, was virtually empty. So these were all medium frames that were pretty much there was just a little bit of honey down there, but it was pretty empty. There was two or three frames of bees up here on one of the deeps. And then there were a few frames that just had honey on them that, that were untouched. So I opened them up and there was no brood the first time I opened them up. And then a couple weeks later, I noticed eggs and she was laying on two, two or three frames, but that was it. Now I knew I was going to be transitioning all my bees over to the deeper, extra deep frames, these frames. And my plan was to make double nuke resource hives in this configuration that would fit these frames. Knowing that, I took the empty deep frames and the empty medium frames out of this part of the Adrian hive and I dropped in four of these frames. So knowing that she was building up and they were alive, I gave them four of these frames in this kind of a hive situation. They still had four regular deeps and four regular mediums. Over the course of about a month, she started working these frames, the big deep frames. And currently, she's got eggs on three of these deep frames and then all four of the Langstroth deeps. So a week before I put the packages in, I put the Adrian hive into one of the big bee barns. And when I did that, I put in the four frames that they had started working, plus four Langstroth frames. Now, the cavity is the size of this. I left those mediums just out of the mix. So there are currently three deep frames, then four regular Langstroth frames, and then one more deep over here, one of these extra deeps on this side. So there's a cavity underneath the, the regular Langstroth deeps that keeps, they keep filling up with comb, but I keep taking it off because I know I'm gonna be splitting them. So knowing that I want to transition all of my brood boxes to these extra deep frames, I knew when I made a split, I was gonna be splitting into an extra deep double nuke. And that is what we have here. This is a standard double nuke or a resource hive, what I, what I call a resource hive. Down below, we have a 10 frame box. So it's 10 frames wide with a divider down the middle. And then on the top, you have usually two deep boxes that sit on top, which gives you a cavity for four, four over four deep Langstroth frames and then four over four deep Langstroth frames. One entrance goes this way, one entrance goes this way, and this is a place to make queens uh, and to do splits. So what I did was I cut down the top boxes to be just medium height. So instead of having deep over deep, I have deep over medium, same division, same entrances going one way and the other. And then I surrounded the entire thing with two inches of foam. So this is a foam wrapped, foam on the bottom, double nuke resource hive. However, it's only a deep medium box and not a deep, deep box. So I can fit my extra deep frames in right on the sides. So the plan today is to split into this box, but what am I gonna do with those deep Langstroth frames? So I'll be taking the Adrian Queen from that hive, putting her in here with a frame of her own brood, and then two already drawn frames here that they can, they can start working on. So she'll have three nice frames in here to immediately get going on. Then I'm gonna take her brood, two of those Langstroth brood frames that are just regular deeps, put an excluder on top to keep her down there so she doesn't come up. Then a deep divided box here. So the deep will go on top of there. I'll put the deep Langstroth frames in here and they'll just hang here above those other frames. The nurse bees can come up through the excluder, take care of the brood that's up here in this box. As the brood emerges, the brood's gonna go down into the hive 
then as that br those brood frames become empty, I'm just gonna take this whole thing off and then take the insulation and all that stuff out of there and just give them four full frames. And by that time, I'll be splitting probably another hive into here and then we'll have a nice double nuke resource hive with four and four extra deep frames. So I was in here yesterday and I did notice they're starting to build swarm cells. So it's, they're just beginning. So as I was explaining before, we have three, four of my extra deep frames here, these here, and then these four here are regular Langstroth deeps and there's nothing below them, just empty space. First thing I wanna do is find the queen, isolate her, and then take out a really good frame of uh, brood with nurse bees on it for the split. Yeah, see they're trying to make more space. Oh, she's right there. There's, that's where she was yesterday. So I'm gonna take her right now and put her into a clip. She's right in there. All right, and now we can figure out what we're doing. I'm gonna put this over in the other hive and this is going to be one of the brood frames. Oh, look, there's, these, are the, these are the swarm cups I was seeing yesterday. So these are not going to be needed anymore because we're, they're not going to swarm now because I'm, I'm splitting them. But you can see here there are some swarm cups. These aren't, there's nothing in them yet, but they're, they're preparing. All right, I'm going to go put this in the other box. And I need, I love being able to just walk up to the side of this hive and any side and just dive in. Okay, I'm gonna take another frame as well, another one of these brood frames. It has emerging brood because I want the emerging brood to go into the little nuke I'm making. There's resources on here, emerging brood, nurse bees, pollen. So now we need one really good frame of brood on a deep frame for the queen. And I would say that is a nice frame of brood. Pretty fantastic. So that is going to go into the split. That is all nurse bees and uh, taking care of that brood there. Boom. Queen is going over to the double nuke. All right, so what we have here is a deep box, a split deep box, with the frame of emerging brood, emerging brood, and a whole bunch of nurse bees on here. This is our queen. It's starting to rain. Perfect. All right, this is the big frame that we put in with a ton of emerging brood. Then they're going to get a frame of undrawn comb and a frame of drawn comb with some resources on it that they can use and they can start to build. Okay, so now we have a, we've got three extra deep frames in this little nuke here. Queen's going in, right onto her frames. Go. There she is right there. Right down in there. Okay, okay, exclude her. So queen's down there, we got new frames they can work on. And then this awesome frame, these frames here of resources and brood and nurse bees up here. Uh, this is a really weird setup. This is a big contraption, but it does, it does make sense, and I, I think it's gonna work. Um, back to the other hive. Okay, so I just removed the queen and a ton of brood and nurse bees from this, this hive. All the foragers are still gonna be coming back to this hive, so it's, it's gonna be a strong hive. 
but I want to make sure they have suitable eggs to make a new queen because now they're queenless. All right, so what I did by taking the queen and all those frames out here is I, I just made them think that there was a swarm and now they have to make a new queen. If they start making queen cells, I'm hoping to take out a frame of queen cells and then get these frames and do the same thing I just did with the other ones, put these above a double nuke for this to emerge. And then I can just drop in uh, empty frames in this hive and then this will be completely converted over to the deep frames. I think they're definitely getting ready to swarm, but not anymore. Okay, looking for eggs. Oh look, they got, a, they got a couple cells started already. Look at that. We may already have queen cells. Those just came up in the last day. They weren't there yesterday. Because that could be great. That could already be another split. So tons of brood, all ages. There's queen cups in the gap. And I'm thinking, I, I, it's really hard for me to see in there because it's very light comb. And I can't tell if there's jelly in there, but that could be already queen cells forming. Um, so they just may think that there was a swarm and they're gonna make those cells now. Okay, this right here is the frame where we're gonna get, we're gonna get a queen cell. But I don't think we're gonna get two frames of queen cells. I think we're just gonna get that one. One other thing I need to do today is I'm gonna do a mite wash and make sure that the apivar that I had in here for the past like month and a half did its job. So I'm gonna take some bees out of here, I'm gonna kill a handful of bees and check for mites. So this is how many bees are gonna to die today, one half cup. And this is gonna be the test to see what the mite levels are in the hive and if I need to treat any more or if the apivar did its job. These bees are gonna die, but it's for, this, for the future of the colony. So mite test. So these are nurse bees on brood. Just gonna take half cup of bees. And they're gone. They're dead. That's it. These go back in the box. I'm going to shake these bees now and see if any mites fall off. Three hundred bees. These bees died for the colony, and now I look for mites. I see zero mites. Yeah, that's not a mite. Okay, we got a mite count of zero mites on that sample. So, apivar worked, and I don't think the pressure was very high anyway. But they they definitely have no mites as of right now. So May 16th, zero mites. I split the other hive into that double nuke box and they've been alone for about six days now. So there should be queen cells in here. Okay, we got some emergency cells here. There's three there, oh, four. There's four capped ones. Five, six, seven. Okay, so there's queen cells on this. I could take this frame and put it in the other side of that double nuke. And I may just do that. Yeah, there's a lot of queen cells on this. So this could be its own little nuke. All right, I'm going to take this frame here that has more queen cells on it and I'm going to make a little nuke, like a little two frame nuke and put it in that other side of that resource hive over there. Okay, so this 
is from the other hive. And there are queen cells on here, emerging brood, a lot of resources, and a lot of nurse bees. And I'm gonna shake more nurse bees in. Tons of brood. Drawn comb frames, three frames in here. So I'm gonna shake some bees in from the other hive. few more. So a week ago I took Adrian, the actual queen, out of her original hive, put her over here on this frame. So we have Adrian in here, she's laying on this frame, these two frames are drawn and they have resources and they are working on these frames. Above this frame is another frame of emerging brood that's from the original hive that's going down into here. So this, this side has another frame up top. This side over here, I just took this frame from the original Adrian hive that had been making queen cells on it. So there's a bunch of queen cells on here. A queen will emerge from this frame. She'll fly out this direction, go mate, hopefully come back and start laying on these frames. I just shook a ton of nurse bees in here from the other hive. Some of these bees are going to fly away and they'll go back to the original hive, but the nurse bees should stick around. And these bees all know each other because they all came from Adrian. So they're kind of checking each other out. But I'm going to put the excluder on now and seal them up. Pick a side, bees. Pick a side. Okay, this side over here is getting food. Okay, this side over here, remember, has a frame of brood that's emerging, two frames of brood actually, that's emerging and they're going down to the, to the hive. So as the brood emerges, they'll go down to the other bees and join them and take care of the queen down there. They also have food up here now. So two splits, both from the Adrian hive, hopefully in about 10 days or so, a queen will emerge. The surviving queen out of all the queen cells that come out of this side over here will hopefully fly out, go mate, come back. And I'm hoping in a couple of weeks to see eggs down here on this side. If we do have a laying queen over here, that means we have another Adrian queen, success. This Adrian queen is still the original Adrian queen. So hopefully we have two laying queens in this side over here. And then we have the same timing over here on this hive. This is the cherry hive. This is the original, where the original Adrian queen was laying over there. And that's where all the foragers are going. So this is a very powerful hive. There's a lot of bees working to keep that hive going right now. Um, I did remove a lot of brood. I, I removed nurse bees. I removed the laying queen. But there's still a ton of bees working on that hive over there. There are th three frames of brood I think still left and there's one frame that has all the queen cells on it. So hopefully that queen will emerge over there, fly out and mate, come back roughly the same time period, you know, a week and a half or so from now, hopefully we find some eggs in that hive from a new queen. And if that happens, that means we got three hives out of one surviving hive and they're all Balboa Adrian line. That's the plan. That's the goal. I will give you updates as things progress, but that's where we are right now. Thanks for watching.